What's up? What's up? Hello, everyone. Welcome it's to Skate, Skate Date. Date. Guess what? It's the last episode of season two. I know we were like, oh, we're actually going to do our seasons like the school year, but we decided, no, fuck that. We're going to do it by the year year because that makes more sense. Wait, what? Like season three starts in January. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we were going to be like, in June it ends, and then, but like that doesn't make sense. We should just. No, we were going to take a summer break. Yeah. Yeah, but I still think we could start season three in January, still take a summer break, but then finish season three at yeah, the end. That's yeah, that's what I thought we were doing. Yeah, so I thought we were doing like a school year thing, <laughs> no, and then I thought, no. what the hell? I don't know. It didn't make any sense. Mm-mm. Anyway, so this is the last episode of season two. It was long because 2021 was not that fun. No, it was long because we started a podcast in 2020, the year, year one of the pandemic, and we were, we started at the end of the year. Season two was long because we did a whole fucking year. <laughs> like, yeah. who are we? I don't know anyone else, like, even people that are like, yeah, I still have a podcast. It's like, they were smart enough to take a break, but no, my girlfriend's yeah. a workaholic. No, we didn't. Oh, we didn't exactly formulate how long our season was going to be. So then we just ended up doing a whole year of a podcast and no one does a full year of a season of something. So what were we thinking? I don't know. But we were anyways. thinking that. Hi, I'm Shev. Oh, hi, I'm Rebel. Together we're Shovel. Shovel. That's not what you're supposed to say. Can you dig it? Not tonight. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So tonight's edition will kind of be like mukbang asmr because asmr yeah because we're breaking the cardinal the cardinal cardinal we're breaking the cardinal rule we are gonna be eating while we do this podcast like some podcasts that are out there they get on my nerves because they're like okay please don't (laughs) don't aggressively be i was being asmr no, no, no. We don't want people to turn this off. I'm just oh, saying. Okay. You might hear the occasional like crunch of an Oreo, um, a peanut butter flavor Oreo to be exact. I haven't tried it yet. Or like Or the shuffle <laughs> of a tiny M and M. Yeah, where you're drinking hot cocoa with whipped cream and marshmallows. And what else do we got, babe? Oh, these bougie um chocolate truffles baileys baileys chocolate truffles because rebel thought it was a holiday extravaganza and i think it's just that hey we're not going to do the typical stuff we're just going to talk about our year and what it was like and just have one last like hoorah 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 oh my god today i said the word hubbub and someone was like what's a hubbub so i'd like to know if all of you know what a hubbub is it's okay. I'm part three of the trick or trivia on Moxie's YouTube channel. You were saying I said all sorts I was of weird Schmitzen. <laughs> you were like, I'm Schmitzen, like you were like Schmitten. But then Christmas. I was like, I'm used to being at the North Pole. It's hot out here. I'm Schmitzen or something like that's that. That's not <laughs> I don't I don't understand. Amazing. Don't even know if that's the correct Jewish term for sweating. Um, it I don't, sounded right. <laughs> no, that that's it at it all. It popped in my head. I should be like my favorite murder corrections corner. Just email us. What title, does Schmitzen correction mean? Corner. Yeah, what does Schmitzen mean? Shove, Help us stop it. <laughs> that's what you stop say. it. Shove. <laughs> but yeah. So, um, how was your year, babe? Wow, um, my year. <laughs> well, uh, it started out a little bit rough. Um, and by a little, a little broken, bit, I mean a lot of it. It was very broken. I broke my leg in January, so I just kicked it off on the the wrong foot. Sounds like you. Yeah. Um. And then I went into a very dark, very deep depression for several months. And then I turned thirty. Wait, how old am I? Thirty. Yeah, I turned thirty. <laughs> if there's anything that and you're I was, wondering about this year, it's when you don't even know how old you are anymore. Literally supposed to be this amazing birthday, and I was fucking depressed the whole time. Um, but that's okay. It's fine. Uh, and then I skated again, which was pretty cool. We went to San Diego, which was pretty fun. And uh, then oh I gosh. broke my teeth. Right, but, and yes. then it's Christmas. Okay. That's like how I the year went, right? I didn't know you were going to break it down. That. That I'm was pretty sure that's the that whole year, okay. right? Ask me. Okay, Shev, how was your year? 
My year was rough and tumble. Um, it had many lows and a few highs. It was an adventure and it was a blur. All right. So when you had oh, one word. Oh, mine was also was, rough and tumble. <laughs> feeling a little bumble. Exactly. I was like, are you trying I'm to do gonna the whole go podcast? And stumble. Right oh, my God. Okay. So <laughs> let's make this flow a little. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you had one word. To describe what the beginning of the year, like January 1st, like to describe like what you felt, like what you remember, like what did you think? I remember feeling hopeful. Hopeful? Mm-hmm. How come? I just, so the one real memory that I have of like January 1st, well, I don't even know that I have a memory of like what we did on New Year's. Like I don't have that specific memory, but I remember skating. I remember recording the episode that we did for Core Girl Straight Skates. And then I remember skating in my full pink jumpsuit and I was starting to get the snake walk down. And I remember skating at the tennis court and being like, this is so fun. And just feeling like I could breathe and being outside and like being like, okay, like fuck, like 2020 was crazy and let's not this year and I felt like I was renewed in my senses for like something fresh and and a change yeah that's how I felt how did you feel on uh, January 1st if you had one word I would think relieved no validated ooh validated that's a good word why I felt validated because I had started therapy the end of December Right? Or did I sign up for the end of December? I don't know. But um I'm not I'm not gonna say exactly the first, but within like It was very month. close yeah. to that time. Um thing. like being like, Oh, okay, like there is something wrong with me and it's like weird to say, like, I'm not crazy, there is something wrong with me. But it's like, yeah, that's something wrong. It's like you are crazy, if that makes sense. Like mm-hmm. it wasn't just like I was being dramatic or like that it was like oh I'm just letting my trauma get to me it was like oh no you legit like yes it's trauma but you also have a chemical imbalance because like sometimes I had those moments where I'm like is it just my experiences that made me this way but something feels like deeper off like really wrong and broken within me and not just like mentally um and then like getting that validation that like oh no bitch you got a chemical imbalance and you need medication also is like oh okay and like getting my first medication like that was very like okay like that gave me hope that like it would help and Rebel says to other people in front of me that it helps a lot, that it's completely different. Haven't had to talk with her yet about, like, what that means, but, like, hope too soon. So I know there's definitely, like, it's worked for the better. Um, I've told you that we've had that conversation before. No, but not, like, deep. Oh, okay. Yeah, like, when I hear you talk to other people, like, it sounds like, oh, shit, like, it must have been really, really bad. So, like, especially the last time I remember you were talking to you, and I was just like, oh, shit, like, it's that much of a difference? Like, how bad was I before? And we've never had, like, that deep talk. It's just been, like... Yeah, and just, like, to, like, alleviate any fears or worries that you have, <laughs> it's not that it was bad. It's that it's so good when you're mm-hmm. on your meds. So it's not... It was never bad. It was just... It's just, like... I didn't even imagine that it could be so good. Uh. And so that's why, like, it was never bad. It's just, like, the comparison with, like, how positive it's impacted you, like, blows my mind. Like, I never thought you needed medication. And then you got on medication, and I was like, holy hell, that helped you so much. Like, that's that's the feeling. that Like, every time I express that, I'm expressing something positive. Yeah, but, like, how? So, like, you, like... You didn't tend to be, like, aware of the things that you did, like, or how you were feeling as much, or you didn't express it, or you didn't act like you knew, Mm -hmm. but, like, when you're on meds, it's, like, you catch how you're feeling, and it's, like, you acknowledge it, and then you, like, communicate with me better in a way that you never communicated with me before. You never communicated with me about your feelings mm. before, ever. And I always felt like there was a wall that you had up. And I knew it wasn't necessarily me, 
But I always kind of wondered, like, whether that was something that would come with time Mm -hmm. or whether that was, like, a trauma thing or what. But it felt like when you got on the medication, it was, like, you were more willing to explore that. It's like you weren't as scared of your own mind. Uh. Even though I know that you are still scared of your own (laughs) mind, it was like you were less scared of it. Like, you were willing – like, it's it's like you had a – bulletproof vest to go into your mind with so it's like you had a shield and so you were willing to explore that and with that happening like you let me in more and I thought that that was really wonderful that like I, think I felt uh like I would closer like to you like to, that I would like to give um that like credit to just the drugs but I think most of that is therapy and like learning to see the thought the signs Mm. like giving those tools um the other part is that i don't go to a hundred anymore so like the therapy has taught me to catch it before it gets there and like how maybe talk it out um and not be afraid of like like noticing it but the medicine is more like oh you're not gonna just like pop off and go straight to paranoia and think that you're against me and that you're my worst enemy and my greatest love at the same time and that a hundred percent everything bad's about to happen so (laughs) yeah and like but you would and I think that what you didn't realize is that when you felt like that I could feel it you know Mm -hmm. like I could feel like I feel like when you weren't on your medicine and I didn't know this when you weren't on your medicine it wasn't until you were on your medicine that I realized this. When you weren't on your medicine, you were like super like this um. a lot. Like it was like one day you'd be like this and then the next day you'd be like all the way down here. And then I wouldn't know kind of from day to day mm-hmm. where it was going to be. And that was kind of hard for me. Yeah. And I didn't, but I didn't know that it was hard for me Mm -hmm. because I didn't know what the flip side of that coin was. Yeah. So when you did start taking your meds and it stabilized and you still have your ups and downs for Mm -hmm. sure. Like you definitely still have them, but they're just like more muted. And so for me, it felt like such a huge difference from being like so intense up and down every day to like less intense up and down and like not every day that it was like a sense of peace kind of Mm -hmm. that I hadn't really known that I wanted and I think that that would that's the biggest like significant change for me is is I feel like oh it's it's really cool that I can see that you're it's like there's a lane like it's like you're in bowling and there's bumpers now Mm -hmm. and that's pretty cool nice I like that if you had one to three words to describe how you feel right now as of December 20th, what would it be? <laughs> um, <laughs> overwhelmed, unsure, and self-aware. <laughs> yes. That's how I feel right now. What about you? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know if that's a good thing, babe. Um- <laughs> oh, no, I don't feel like it's a good thing, which is why I'm, you know... At least I'm self-aware about it. Like, I know that I'm not in a good spot right now, so. But, Mm. yeah. I had a word, and then I lost it. Because I was looking for all sorts of crazy words. Yeah, you just kept shouting so many words, I lost my word. (sighs) Right now, I feel lost. (laughs) I guess that would be a good word. Um, I just found out that I now need antidepressants on top of my mood stabilizers. Um, things have gotten dark again, real, real dark, as you know what they can get. So, um, I was brave enough to ask for help. Um, I feel like I was missing a lot of therapy towards the end, and I was like looking for stupid excuses, like, "Well, I can't miss out on school because school's, I mean, on work because school work's important." And then going back and being like, "All right, now I got to really start the hard therapy." So fully back in it, I'm gonna start new meds. And at first, I was just like, "Man, like I don't want this." Like I felt like it was like a tally against me like I felt like now that it's been almost a year of therapy and medication that I should be getting better and like I know I'm getting better but it's also like 
oh, I got to put more crap in my body to regulate how I'm feeling. But then that gives me kind of like back and forth of like, uh, and hope, I guess. It was because like, but I don't want to give myself too much hope. Like, oh, you're going to get on Prozac and like be happy or like you're going to be more like active again. So been like delving into a lot of research about that. And it's like, seems like pretty good for a lot of people. So I'm hoping, I'm hoping so for me, but I'm just like, don't want to put all my hope into a little pill that I'm going to start taking. So we'll see how that goes and works good but I feel like um overwhelmed and it's not because of work it's just how where I'm at mentally right now so I'm just trying to like balance that off and realize like recognize what's happening and be like it's not even really work it is you um (laughs) so trying to deal with that and what else that's pretty much it like not skating as much as I wish I was but that's just because I feel so tired and exhausted and just, like, not living life to the fullest for sure. So that's where I'm at right now. Yeah, I think for me, I feel, well, one, I'm definitely being, as you said, overworked. So I had just have too many jobs right now, and um, I'm not happy about it. And I'm just trying to push through and trying to get one of them to nail me down with enough money to pay my bills and uh the hope is that if I work hard enough that one of them will see that and be like we want you around forever not forever but just for a long time yeah and I just I'm hoping that that's where that goes but I just I I made a I don't even know how it happened to be completely honest with you It's like I started an additional job and doing that wasn't supposed to be hella overwhelming, but then I ended up doing about twice as much work as I signed up for originally. Mm -hmm. And then at the same time that I ended up doing double the work at the new place, I ended up getting more work piled on at all the other places I was working am working and so it's just been a little bit overwhelming and I've been working from like 7 a.m 8 a.m 8 30 until like three in the morning like every single day Mm -hmm. and it's gotten to the point where I feel bad like watching a movie with shove because I feel like I need to be doing X, Y, and Z because there's literally not enough hours in the day to complete all the tasks that I'm being asked to do for all my jobs. So yeah, I would like that to be done. And I do see that being done sometime in the future. And I see myself like asking for a raise at some of the places and just like having those hard talks and also like evaluating within myself because the reason why I said self-aware is because I I notice that I am currently the person that I do not want to be. I am the person that doesn't have anything to talk about but work. I'm the person that feels like they don't have time to hang out with their friends or, mm-hmm. you know, their family or anything like that. And I, yeah, you didn't I, even hang out with me a couple of nights. Yeah, no, I just, I literally have just been like, there's literally no way that I can, you know, take time off because... I I can't like the way my work is set up is I finish the tasks it's not like you work from certain hour to certain hour Mm -hmm. and not being able to finish the tasks has been really really hard on me one of our favorite things is crossing things off our to-do list yeah and and I haven't really been doing that because the list just keeps going longer yeah and it's just like wild because I like will get everything done or like even close to and then I'll get a text message or an email that's like, oh, I also need you to do this, this, and this. And I'm just like, I'm one person. Like, how are, how is this happening? Well, so. I can say is like when stuff like that happens, you have to be vocal or else nothing will happen. Um, <laughs> they're going to just think, oh, it's okay. It's okay. And I think often in life, like we get overwhelmed and we just like keep sinking and keep taking it on, taking it on. And then there until we like break or we just keep doing it and get ragged. And it's like you have to know that like not necessarily is other people like piling too much onto you by choice or just being like, fuck it. It's like they think you're okay with it. And then they don't realize it's a lot because they're living their own life. 
So you got to speak up because I've learned that lesson before. And then as soon as I said something, everything changed. And then like I had help or people stopped dumping so much on me. So I think that's the one thing I would like to tell you is like you have to speak up and like let people know. And so that they understand because they probably don't know. They don't know that five other people are doing the same thing they're doing at the same time. Um. For me, I think this year, one of my biggest lessons was to give myself grace and, like, not really feel, I think, like, before, like, I had a lot of guilt that would eat away at me if, like, I did something or felt a certain way, and now I just feel like, no, I'm allowed to feel this way, and I'm allowed to make mistakes, and I'm allowed to fail and, like, not, like, fret and, like, wallow in it for too long. That's a good lesson to learn. How about you? I think probably the biggest lesson that I learned this year was... Um, uh, um, Not to break have health insurance? <laughs> no, I mean, I think that the biggest lesson I learned this year is that I'm a fucking strong person. You are. And that I can get through anything. I agree with that. You're because very strong. it was a fucking hard year. Like, it was really hard. Mm -hmm. And I learned a lot about, like, my ability to push through things. And I struggled a lot. And I'm glad that I, like, was am able to come out on the other side of it and to say, like, hey, I fucking did that. But mm -hmm. I also, like, God, I can see myself. It's so weird. I'm having this, like... I know weird your moment. eyes are all teary. You're going to cry. I'm having this weird moment. I'm totally going to cry right now. <laughs> I'm having this weird <laughs> moment right now where I'm like seeing myself a year from now watching this video and being like, poor girl. Like, <laughs> I just feel so bad for you. <laughs> like, I know things are going to get better, you know? Like, I can tell that it's going to be fine. But it's like, I know that I'm not in a good place right now. And like, I know it's going to get better, but fuck. I think, you know, I always thought, even though I know I have a strong, like, pain tolerance, I've never thought of myself as, like, mentally being strong, um, except for, like, my motivation. I've always known that my motivation, my passion was very strong, but I don't think I ever knew that, like, my ability to push through things, like, mental hardship was strong because I always... As a younger person, I kind of defaulted to, like, finding someone to care for me. Like, I never really dealt with things by myself. I always was just looking for attention and support. And this year, I feel like for the first time, I was like, you need to deal with this by yourself, you know? And, um, and with help of a therapist. Yeah. My therapist is... The best. I'm so grateful for her. You also got medicated and found I out. I got, yeah, I, I was going to say this year I also, so like, went into the darkest depression that I've had in probably 10 years. Imagine if you didn't go into depression, that would have been fucking weird. So like. Yeah. I, I mean, come on. You had a hell of a fucking year. It started off like shitty. Yeah. Yeah. And it was just like, it felt like it was never ending. Like, it just was. Oh, it was so hard. And I felt so isolated. I do not recommend breaking your leg. During a pandemic. During a pandemic when no one can come over and, like, help you. Like, no one can. No one knows that you're in the place that you're at. Because it's really easy for people to recognize how dark and how hard it is when they see you. But when they don't see you and when it's normal not to see you because it's a pandemic and everyone is, you know, on their own, you get forgotten. And it's just it's it's such a, a dark place. And it was so hard for me. And um, yeah, so like going to therapy, it wasn't even until like six months in that I realized that I had ADHD. <laughs> Because it was, like, not even kind of at the forefront of any sort of discussion. I mean, I, everyone in her life was like, of course, we all thought Duh. it. Yeah. But Rebel. I did not like, know. Like, it the hard way, huh, babe? I learned everything the hard way, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so I found out I had ADHD, and I think I figured it out because I saw a TikTok. Of course. TikTok letting TikTok, us know. Yeah, TikTok. I know because of TikTok. So I saw some like ADHD TikTok and I was like, wait, what? 
Like, that's totally how I feel. And, <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, I had always, we did a whole episode about this, but I had always, you know, experienced ADHD being viewed differently because of my family. Mm. And um, so when I was diagnosed with ADHD and then when I was put on medication, it just, like, kind of opened my whole world up. And that was, did I get put on I got put on ADHD meds, like, right after I broke my face, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Crazy. <laughs> oh, man, it's been a wild year. I also learned that, I mean, I just think that I, yeah, I think my body, like, I push myself in ways that I've never been pushed before. Mentally, physically, with Disco Oasis, that pushed me really fucking hard. Mm -hmm. That was hard for me mentally and physically. You leveled up your skate game. Yeah, that was awesome. I found out that I absolutely love dance skating. Mm -hmm. and Like, I never would have found that out. I made a bunch of new friends, which was pretty cool. I got promoted at Moxie. Yeah, hell yeah. Um, I got to be on a show on Nike's YouTube. Amazing. Um, the rollout had almost a thousand people I think there. It did have a yeah, thousand. Yeah, let's people just say a thousand. It. it had a thousand people. Um it. yeah, right before that Delta hit, it was like boom. And oh, then yeah. boom, Delta. And then we got COVID. And then we got COVID. Which was miserable. And then and not got, at the rollout we didn't. No, not at the rollout. No, we got it <laughs> but, like a month later. And then um yeah, that sucked. That also twenty twenty one was like all the people that showed their true colors in 2020, um, we got to see them face to face. Or it was more like it was weird. It was just weird seeing people after weird a year of like <laughs> being stuck at home and like a lot of weird social interactions because like no one knew how to act right. I've had a lot of interactions recently where it was like. I couldn't remember if I knew someone because I had met them in person or if I knew someone because I had, I follow them on the internet. And I think that that's so crazy. Like legitimately don't know if I've met them before in person and like don't introduce myself because I think, oh, we know each other. And then I'm like, do we know each other or do I just stalk them like a person? I assume I know everyone <laughs> too or like have met them before. Because 2020 put us in such a talk, watch, and I live in people's stories, so I see people talking so much, and sometimes I message them that I feel like I know them or have met them. And literally, there's been at least three times where halfway through, I'm like, wait, that's our first time meeting, right? And they're like, yeah. And I'm like, oh, shit. <laughs> oh. Nice to meet you. <laughs> yeah, I've done the same thing. Also, these are disgusting. Do not order the peanut butter Do Oreos. Order. Do not order. <laughs> Do not order these. Do not Don't buy. buy these. They're gross. Just um, get regular Oreos and dip them in peanut butter. Which is the reason why I got these peanut butter Oreos is because on one of our first dates. If it would have been half regular and half peanut butter, it would have worked. Yeah. On one of our first dates, Shove made me like this, like, um, we're going to get high snack board. And it had all sorts of fun stuff on it. And one of the things that was on it was Oreos and, like, a, just a thing of peanut butter. Mm -hmm. And that's when I tried it for the first time. So had hot chips. And just regular chips. And then was that the it same like night salty, that you made the rose sweet. with the tomato? No, that was another time. Oh. She spoiled me in the beginning. Now she doesn't care about me at all. Gotcha. Dang. Um, yeah, so I don't know. Where were we where were we? So yeah, it was just like social interactions were weird. Um I think like it's interesting to come out of twenty twenty being so like well, y'all know that I've been listening from the beginning, like hardcore like quarantine and working from home and Rebel still had to work from home this whole year. So it's worse off for her because at least I have a warehouse to go to to moxie and go yeah, work I fucking hate my life and rebel's still stuck working all i this. still <laughs> never leave this fucking house yeah so it was a lot of me like yelling at her like from work being like go outside for 15 minutes or even coming home and like forcing her to go lay in the hammock in the sun like during the summertime um i definitely fell off that for a little bit like for a while and i feel like it did help to like force you to go outside because there'd be days where you'd be like i haven't been outside once there are still days like yeah like today i 
went to pick up oat milk and I was like, <laughs> oh, wow, what's it like to get in the car during the day? Yeah, and that's just not good, especially for an extrovert like her. So when we do go out, I think that's why you're like a crackhead <laughs> because you're just like, yeah. finally, um, this year. But yeah, we came out of that year and then like, of course, took it easy. But once we had the vaccine, we we're like, okay, here we go. Hell yeah. Um, we hosted our first like barbecue. That and was cute. And then we had a Halloween party. The Halloween party was cute. And then we had our Thanksgiving brunch. Which was also cute. All with like pretty much the same amount of people. And like the same people. Yeah. <laughs> Literally and it the was same like, like 10 people it was, came to every single one of those Our things. vaccinated buddies. <laughs> and it's like still not a rager like we would have if we weren't in a pandemic still. Yeah. Like it wasn't like bring a friend and your friend's friend. Where like I'd be down to have one big party like that. Yeah. But like we're still in a pandemic and it was weird being like this is our new reality. We can kind of go back to life but we're not like. Yeah, it's weird. It's like this weird, um, what's it called? Like you're in purgatory right now. <laughs> yeah, that's a good explanation for it. But like, 2021 is a purgatory. Now we have Omnicron, whatever. Omnicron? Omnicron. <laughs> yeah, which sounds really intense. And it's like this whole thing where it's like, I'm going to sound like so crazy now compared to like how I sounded in 2020. But or like even with the Delta, I felt like, oh, shoot, like, let's let's like kind of like pull back a little bit like shit's getting real. And like after getting really sick and like real, we got real, real sick. Um, I mean, so grateful that we had the vaccine. And now it's like hard because it's like the information's out there is like it spreads faster, but it's not as worse. And then it's like weird because it sounds like it's mutating to be more cont contagious, but then it's also mutating to not hurt is bad <laughs> like, <laughs> I don't know I just don't trust the initial things that come out about it but there's like, also the, in the beginning the delta like the things that came out about it it was weird and it didn't make sense and it ended up being different you know what I mean yeah so I just don't trust ever changing right now yeah it's like really hard because it's like I it's like I want to live my life and I want to be able to travel and I want to be able to like help the skate community in different areas and like keep inspiring and hosting things but then at the same time it's like oh I don't want to spread this thing and then it's like yeah I want to be like just everyone also like get vaccinated and like if you don't get vaccinated by now like dude like I can't like we tried so hard 2020 to do it for people that not to kill them and not this and now I feel like now people have the option to get vaccinated and if they're still choosing not to get vaccinated and you get sick and you go to that hospital I'm sorry I can't feel bad for you because that was the choice you made the medicine is there and if nothing health-wise is stopping you from taking it it's like I that now I'm at the point where like I'm not gonna stop living my life because someone that's afraid an anti-vaxxer won't take the vaccine yeah, I think to it's, an extent. I of think course. it's I think it's hard because it's like I don't know, like the fact that you can still get it when you're when you're vaccinated yeah. makes it hard for me. It makes it like I don't know what to do. I don't know how I feel. Like I'm finally looking at going back into the classroom. Um, yeah, at the end of January, or beginning of February, and I'm like hella intimidated by it and I don't know you're gonna have a face shield and a mask like am I doing that like is that what I'm doing <laughs> you know what I mean like I don't know like am I gonna be like don't come close to me students and talk to me like I I don't know I honestly don't know how to act and how to like go into public because even like the little bit of like in-person work that I have done which is very little but like the amount I have done is like <laughs> around people that I already know and like are kind of in my circle and so it's not been weird but well, like being in a room for more than two hours with a 30 students but that's this is, but you gotta ask yourself like I am to the level where I now feel safe in a room like I can be in a room like if I was in a class full a full class with a teacher as long as everyone had their mask on and I had my mask on, I would be okay with that. But you've also had the opportunity to be going to school. 
and oh, I my school of three other students. No, but like you're still like <laughs> you still go places yeah. with people who aren't close to you, and you're in closer. Quarters. Oh, I get what you're saying. You yeah. know, like I literally still yeah. the only person that I really see is you mm-hmm. and and our roommate. You know, like I don't, and like sometimes I see you know some of the other Moxie people, but like. Besides that, like I literally only see people on video. Well, yeah, but like, what do you? What about like when we go to Alex's bar? I feel like I'm gonna have a panic attack every time. Mm-hmm. Like, like I'm fine, but like in my head, it screams like, "You shouldn't be doing this. You shouldn't be doing this." But I know that that's probably wrong, so that's why I don't say anything, and I just like try and like, because I feel like it's an adjustment period. Like I feel like it's an untraining of everything that we learned in the last year. Two years, right? Like, well, I mean, if you want to be improve your chances, definitely wear a mask all the time and avoid places that are crowded. Like, that's number one. Like, the game I'm playing, I know right off the bat, can be risky. Like, I know that if I don't have my mask on and I'm like walking somewhere and there's a crowd of people, that one little pass on the sidewalk. That could lead, if someone sneezes, doesn't cover their mouth, that could lead to me getting COVID. So, like, for me, it's like, oh, I probably should have my mask on all the time. But then they say, oh, if you're outside, it might be okay. But then now you should mask on again. And I think, like I said, it's like saving, like giving myself grace is that, like, I went from being extreme afraid of people having panic attacks in grocery stores to now, like, being like when I feel unsafe I'll do it but I also know like there were times where I thought I was being safe and then what happened fucking got COVID (laughs) yeah and I was staying outdoors and I was staying away from people and then it happened and I think it gave me this like fuck dude like it sucks but I think like both ways are valid as long as you're like just don't be messy about it yeah, I think I'm not saying that it's not valid. What I'm saying is that you've had the you've had more opportunities to mentally. Oh no, I'm get saying the way you it. feel is valid. Yeah, I think I because even I was just as you were talking, I was thinking about how like I feel pretty comfortable going to Pigeon's Rink and not wearing a mask. Mm-hmm. So like I'm, and I think that that's just because I've gone a few times, like, and I feel comfortable now mm-hmm. because it's outside, like outside inside, but it's outside, and I know I can like stay away from people for the most part or whatever but like that I'm I'm pretty okay with you know even though I know the same thing like I am risking every time I like go near people but for the most part I go when it's not populated but yeah I think it's just like a mental thing you know that I have to work on or figure out or get used yeah. to yeah like it's just a shift of like going to skate parks or going like there's more skate meetups and like before you went to skate park, you saw like maybe ninety five percent of roller skaters in mask and like zero percent skateboarders in mask, yeah. and now it's still zero percent skateboarders wearing mask, and now maybe it's like 05 percent roller skaters in mask. Yeah. Um, I like to always have mine on me just in case like it gets a little too too packed, but. I think, like, the vaccine did make us really cocky, but then that's also, like, hello, you can still get COVID with the vaccine. Like, what is it now? They're saying, like, 30% chance or something. I don't know how they figure this out. I don't understand (laughs) how that math works. But um, it's definitely feeling more like, okay, this is just our reality now. Like, I don't know how next year's going to be. Like, is every month and, like, every quarter there's a new variant? Like... Who knows? Like, it just keeps mutating. And when does it come to where it's, like, no man's land and then everything's fully open and then just people just get COVID randomly all the time? And it's, like, flu, get your flu shot, but also get your COVID shot. And it's just, like, a part of life. And it's, like, you know? Like, do you think that's going to be our future? I mean, I think we're definitely every year going to have to get a COVID shot for the rest of our lives. But do you think it's going to be, like, wear masks for the rest of our lives? I sure as hell hope not. Or do you think it's just going to be a free-for-all, like, and then when people just get sick, they just get sick, and it's well, something that happens is, more is often. Well, the thing is, is that you want to try and, like, eliminate the disease, you know? Like, hopefully after a few years, people will be fucking over it. We'll finally just get... Well, that's what I'm hoping. Fucking vaccinated. I don't know. I just feel like, also, you would think global warming would be 
worked on because it's becoming blatantly obvious because another thing that happened this year, um, starting with, uh, wait, no, I was going to say Australia was on fire. That was 2020. <laughs> but uh, we did have the ocean on fire. <laughs> Remember? <laughs> we had water on fire. Um, we had the hottest summer, which crazy enough it actually didn't get too bad here in long beach i remember thinking yeah, it's like it's been worse before it's been for worse sure. but then places like florida had like floor the floors like the ground was like rolling and the heat was making the asphalt get all weird and everything was like wild yeah like it never no one has ac because it never gets that hot there it's like going up north and like i guess like the electricity was going out because lines were melting like it was like in the 120 degrees or something what insane wait where in florida oregon in oh in oregon? oregon oh like portland stuff it got so hot and a lot of places got so hot they didn't know what to happen. Texas froze Texas over. Texas froze over. Yeah, What's the that? power grid. Last year or this year? No, the power grid thing Beginning was this of this year. year, right? Yeah, so it was just like, what? Like, places that should not be snowing. Like, all the pipes <laughs> froze so under. So like, weird. So it's like, things like that. And people are still like, yeah, global warming's not a thing. And you're like, hmm. Yeah, it definitely is a thing. It's like the denial. And I know, like, I could say as I'm saying it, I think, like, I personally am in denial. And sometimes I'm like... It's crazy because I know if I would have still been that, like, panicky, like, oh, my gosh, no, like, I'm afraid to go anywhere. Like, let's not leave until the pandemic's over. We would have never got COVID. But then I also would have missed on so many opportunities that were life-changing as well that I think I really needed. Like, I couldn't be that, like, sheltered person. And I think that's, like, definitely changed me from, like, judging people that do go live their lives, you know? But I still do judge them when I know they're not vaccinated and live their life like yeah. that. But um, it's definitely let me know, like, hey, we're we're all just doing the best we can. So I try to, like, understand where other people are coming from that, like, they can't really just, like, lock their self indoors for a whole nother year. Yeah, I think... Um... I think I'm like about at my breaking point with locking myself in doors. <laughs> and I can tell because I've become more socially awkward in a way that I never used to be socially awkward. And I am like struggling like my friends. Like I have a friend who right now has been like rebel, let's go skate. And I was like, yeah. And then I canceled on him. And then he's like, okay, what about this day? And I just ghosted him. Wait, who'd you do that to? Wendell. Why, babe? Because uh, we were you supposed have told to go me out. I would have made you. We were supposed to go out the other night, and then something happened. I don't remember what it was, but it was like, oh, I wasn't feeling good. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, if I'm not feeling good, I'm not going to go out. Like, it wasn't fake. It was like real. Like, I oh. wasn't feeling good. And then he was like, oh, okay, well, what about Sunday? And then I just didn't respond because I just, I feel so awkward all the time about everything. Like, I don't know how to talk to people anymore. And I hate that because I was like always so good at talking to people. And now I'm just fucking awkward all the time. And I don't hang out with any of my friends. And all my friends think I hate but them. When Disco Oasis first ended, you were like a social butterfly. You were always out. You're like, going to the rink, going to the rink. Because going I, just to got, I got used to it and I needed to get back. I have found this like safe little spot in my office. And I get so comfortable there. But, like, when I'm not comfortable there, it's easy for me to keep going out. But if I get there, it's like I stop being able to go out. And it's just, like, so wild because I'm that's never been who I am. Do you think that might have something to do with being having ADHD? I don't know how that would be connected. Like, you get hyper-focused in what's now and what you see and what's near. I know that I have object permanence issues, which means that, like, if I don't see something, I forget about it. So, like... Yeah, that's what I mean. I just used the wrong words. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. So, like, Wendell, because I read the text message, and then I didn't respond to it right in that moment, then I forgot about it completely. And, Mm -hmm. like, I had to see something that reminded me of him in order for me to remember, like, oh, shit, I was supposed to respond to that text message. And then I was like, oh, it's been too long since I got that text message. And then it's like, oh, that's fucking awkward. You can't just text him. You've already missed the date. And then, like, you know what I mean? Like, that's how I feel. That happens to me. I don't think Wendell listens to this. but like, If you're listening, listening, 
Adon, you don't listen, but sorry. I know you've texted me maybe three weeks ago, and then I know you also texted me a month before that. <laughs> There's a list of people that I really, really, really like, and I really want to hang out with. And like when I see you or when I talk to you, and I say like, no, I really want to hang out. I mean it. I do mean it. I just have like major social anxiety issues right now. Did you now. see that thing I sent you where it was like blind react? Like if you have ADHD to that song or, <laughs> or BDT, yeah. And it's like I eat too much. Sometimes I eat too much. Sometimes I eat not enough. And it's all like sometimes I sleep too much, like not enough. And it's like I never text. I go months without texting my friends back. And it's just like. Yeah. yeah, that's exactly <laughs> what I do. And then, like, I go months without texting my friends back, and then all of a sudden I'll te- I decide to text everyone back, and then I'm like, why aren't you all awake at 2 a.m. responding to me right now? Like, yeah. I'm, like, shocked. Like, what the fuck? Anyways, whatever. We're keeping it real today. I'll get in a full, yeah. full you know, dose of real rebel and shove. We've had at least five people that are like, well, fuck this podcast. I hate them. They're on Reddit right now. I don't even <laughs> care. Shab just said, fuck Omnicron and that she's going to live her life. And I'm like, um, kind of, but not that powerful. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, if you could take like one thing from this year and build on it and make it into something different next year or like into something stronger or better next year, what would it be? Hmm, I don't know because like I always feel kind of weird like when I do hear another variant come because it slows my roll because I think before this whole last variant like I thought I had a clear view of like okay things are how the world is looking right now and so I had things in my mind like a lot of like traveling like we discussed and now mm-hmm. it's like I don't know because we have friends that have travel plans that have gotten canceled like they're like countries closing their borders again so that's really tough to really know so I think I'm in limbo again right now personally like there's little things like I got really sad the other day thinking about how I haven't painted in like a year and some months probably or like just little things I'm like oh man like that'd be nice to do again um I don't know I can't say right now sometimes for me, when it's like, oh, New Year's resolutions and what do you want for next year? I'm like, I want to be like, oh, yay, it's a fresh start, and new goals and blah, blah, and new dreams. But like I had text Usher today and I said something about, they had said something about like being grateful that it was the end of the year and starting over. And I just replied and I said, um, it's really great to be like it's really hard to roll into a new year when you have shit on your wheels yeah. <laughs> and right now I feel like I'm rolling into the new year with shit on my shoes or not on my wheels so um I don't know I feel like if I could take one thing from this last year and build on it it would be um like dance skating <laughs> it was like I would say that if you could be like rebel what was the one like really great thing that happened to you this last year i would say it was disco oasis Mm -hmm. disco oasis i think was the best thing that happened to me this last year um it helped me to see a part of myself that i didn't know existed um it helped me to find a passion for something that i never thought that i would even remotely enjoy or be interested in or be even kind of good at And, um, I think that if I could continue building those skills and continue opening up that part of me, because I think like when Disco Oasis happened, it was like, I started making friends again, Mm -hmm. you know, like I started being myself again. I, I felt like, I feel like in the last couple of years, I've been kind of like a little bit more dependent on shove than I should be because she's the person that I see all the time. And so I kind of rely on her as like, you know, I don't know, my main source of entertainment, which, you know, she is for sure. But like also like I should have friends and have, you know, other things that I enjoy doing. And so with Disco Oasis, I started doing that and I really liked that part of myself. But um it was easy to shut it down when I got super busy with work um, and like school started again and everything. And so, yeah. So I think if I could take something from this last year and make it into something, I would say 
that. Nice. What's one thing that you are proud of from this last year? Nothing. That's a lie. <laughs> I'm proud of myself for traveling without you. Yeah, I'm proud of you too. Um, um, I don't know. Like I had like some really cool, I don't know, like work stuff. The Adidas thing was this year? That was this year. Oh my God, that was this year. Yeah. Yeah, because you took the pictures for that at my birthday. Yeah. Yeah. So wow, like, crazy. Yeah, uh, Adidas ads and then we found out that we were on billboards without being paid for them. Um, oh yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um yeah, getting to work with Nike again, like a decent job. That was cool. Um all the stuff with Moxie and then the stuff to come, like I get to do more community outreach stuff. I'm um, getting to be in the Barbie commercial. Oh yeah. Getting to work with Forever Twenty One. Oh yeah. Um, no, there was... Oh my god, this year I worked with Forever 21 I got yes, my first did. Pride campaign yes, I was a did. model this year You were Oh model. my god, I forgot <laughs> Good times Yeah, that's a lot of stuff that happened Yeah, that's good times We were in a TikTok commercial We were in a TikTok commercial I It all... was a banner year at It the... was, I guess <laughs> Shovel house Like All of our mental health stuff was first on the list But I guess there was more stuff um, you know what I'm proud of, which is kind of random, but I made that injured skaters playlist this year mm-hmm. and I didn't realize how much that would be like a cool thing that I'm really proud that I created something in that dark place. Like, I think what's, I'm proud that it's helping people. I'm proud that I was able to create something when I was feeling my darkest that's able to help other people. We're also feeling their darkest. Mm. And that makes me really proud. Yay. Yeah. I'm proud of you for doing that. Thanks. It was kind I of the most you. ridiculous thing. I love you too. <laughs> um <sighs> This has been a hard episode. What? I thought this was gonna be fun. I brought cookies. Yeah, uh, and the cookies suck, so that should have been a ugh, you need a damn. Bailey's chocolate. That's what you need. Okay. There's no, they're not alcoholic, unfortunately, but it tastes like alcohol. You know what my favorite chocolate of all time is? Me. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But also, um, people in Ireland, I don't know if anyone who lives in Ireland listens to this podcast, but the Guinness chocolate. <laughs> Guinness the beer. Guinness has like a chocolate that has Guinness flavoring to it or like it's like got it infused in it or something. Best chocolate, best candy, hands down, 100% that I've ever had in my entire life. Another win was finding out that Nicole Byer follows me. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and if you haven't watched her Netflix special, watch it. It is hilarious. BBW. Um, she has a podcast called Why Won't You Date Me? It is amazing. Mm-hmm. Keep it real. Um, yeah, I'm all about another fat black woman that's very punny like me and um, roller skates being successful. And she's awesome. Um, yeah. I don't know. It's here's been crazy. It's been way better than 2020. We're still trying to deal with that, I guess. Um, everyone is. It's weird being like, oh, it's 2022 coming up. Um I don't know, it's just life is interesting. It's crazy. I'm sure everyone listening is feels the same way. Mm-hmm. Um I definitely like it was close to my birthday pretty soon. So that's mm-hmm. exciting. Um so be on the lookout for that. We will be back the week after my mm-hmm. birthday. Yeah. So like the twelfth thirteenth. Yeah, it's the teenth something. There might be changes. There might not. We'll, There's we'll gonna be it out. some changes. We just don't know what they are yet. Yeah. But, you know, if you're going to travel on over to season three with us, thank you. Thank you for hanging out this long. Yeah. And give us like if there's something that you want. I already have gotten some cool suggestions from the Instagram. I've been posting some stuff. By the way, it's almost always me. If you ever message the Instagram or email us, it's like always me. I used to check the Instagram and now I'm just like. I keep trying to get her to do it and she won't. <laughs> I always sign it shovel, but it's always me. <laughs> um, so you can pretty much assume that you're talking to me. Um, but people have been saying that they like the idea of being able to continue the conversation 
So to have something that we talk about, like maybe they comment and then we respond to their comment about the last episode, the next episode. Mm. So some sort of like continuation. I've heard that a couple of times. I like that. And then um, we're kind of going to look and see like what what segments we want to keep around. Definitely the real world, the real world. But like beyond that, what kind of segments we're going to keep around and what we're going to change and stuff. Yeah, you might not be able to find your skate date anymore and. We might have no advice for you. We don't know. We literally (laughs) don't know. (laughs) Um, But yeah, so if you have any like things that you really want to hear or that you really want to see us do or whatever. Oh, uh, something else. Some a a few other people have said like that you want us to have other people on here. But we're just being honest. We record this like really late on like random nights like we are not organized (laughs) enough to have other people on this i think until we have enough money that we're like making uh, we just need any money that we're making yeah we don't make any money we don't make any money from this so we can't like uh, spend any time that's not which just so you know the ads that we (laughs) sell (laughs) they're pretty cheap so it's not enough to like really be like all right cool we can uh, pay someone to come on the show but i mean people might want to do it for free and um i think we just need to figure out how to use the phone thing because like we literally record in our shitty ass garage it's a mess yeah it's literally we are not professional don't let this backdrop fool you it's really um. impressive that we have a backdrop <laughs> even to be honest there's literally a home depot box right to our right and like Containers, containers and, and shit. To Halloween our left. decorations. Yeah, like it's not. Yeah, so cute. we can't have someone in here. We would love to have someone <laughs> call in. Um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. We're we're trash pandas. We don't know what the hell we're doing, but we we're doing it. We literally don't know how. How somehow, did we get to season the end of season two? Somehow people are still listening, and Rebel forces me to keep doing this, and. This year, I feel like I've ran into at least 10 people that are like, I love the podcast. And I'm like, what podcast? And I'm like, oh, yeah, that thing. Thank you. <laughs> also, have you noticed that I finally figured out how the hell to make the sound on the YouTube video good? <laughs> I hope you've noticed because it took me a long time. And I'm hoping to figure out how to channel it up, sync it up better, too, in the future. So if you're an expert in that, please let me know. Oh, Lord. But, yeah, I'm so... Um, you know, we'll see how next year is. Maybe we'll look at this and we'll be like, wow, we thought our lives were falling apart then. Look at them now. Or we'll be like, oh my gosh, they were so sad. I really think we're going to be like, oh, sad little shovel. What if there's no shovel anymore because a hoe or a rake comes between us? No, I will break a hoe or a rake. (laughs) Literally. There'll be a shovel forever. (laughs) <laughs> I love you, babe. I love you. I hate that you make me do this podcast all the time. Just kidding. <laughs> no, you love it. Don't even. But it's been fun dating you for two years now. I mean, technically, it's like one and a half, but like, please don't ask for to move in or anything. Yeah, we're like very commitment. This is a straight relationship we're having with y'all, which means it's gonna be a minute before any commitment. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, um, hope you liked this chaotic, random, just talking about whatever flows from our mouths without a plan um, episode that we had for y'all. Yeah. Thanks for listening to Skate Date. <laughs> we'll see you in 2022. Bye. Let me kiss. I hate you. Let me kiss. (laughs) You're mean. You're mean.